really interesting. Yeah, really interesting how he considered the bullet so heavily because people just under bluff and he's born at all the tournaments. It's really, really interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, what are his bluffs? You know, like, if we really think about it, like, uh, sure, Ace High, like, Ace High has some showdown value if he had Ace Five. And when he raises the turn with maybe some backdoor diamond draw or something like that, he actually gets called in on this kind of board. Like, what, what hands do you have with your um, and it's gonna have some misdraws and things too. So I think calling is the only option myself. Let's see if Boogaloo uh, got away from it. Ooh, call a six. So this is close between call. Really interesting. So call a six, raise a 7,500 is 10 points. And I'm gonna say he said that because this is a very bad player. And so he thinks the very bad player is gonna stack off here with worse queens a lot. I'm gonna guarantee that's what he's gonna say. Very interesting though. I thought call for sure was the right answer. I never am in this spot. I'm so, I don't know. Um, interesting spot too. I, I think this is a little bit of a lesson for everyone out there too. A lot of times the hands we want to flow with, like this one, are better as, as raises. So this kind of falls in that category. Yeah, and he was kind of an echo chamber for us there saying, you know, we just get better hands to call and worse to yep. Like he's going to have some gut shots in his He's going to have spade draw. He's going to have King X. And we kind of, I mean, we kind of identify kind of what cards are going to be bad for us on future streets. And we, we, we're aware of how to proceed on those cards. So yeah, that's a very good point. You right, you right, you right. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best. You didn't say anything. You won. Just, yeah. just straight up. You won. I, I, I just, I'm just, I'm just, all right, so ooh, look at this. You're not opening this. <laughs> <laughs> you just looked at this. You're not opening this. Button cut off, high deck, low jack. Under the gun, one. You are right. Come on now. Okay. I am. <laughs> so let's see if he. <laughs> He's got to open it or there wouldn't be a hand. <laughs> You, yeah, you I'm be a already down on points. <laughs> you're already down on points in real life. Now, obviously, you're gonna cheat, but <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna evolve. <laughs> you're gonna, yeah, you're gonna adapt, right? <laughs> All right, let's play. I am going to cry if he says he's folding here. <laughs> like, if he's like, yeah, you should be folding this in this kind of tournament, and you were actually right. All right, cool. Wah, wah. Ah! I just want to say for the record that this is the best three-point score I've ever gotten in my life. Because the right answer was fold. The right answer. <laughs> you heard what you said yeah. about the tables. This is a 3K. Here comes the excuses. 10 the points excuses fold. To open. Right if your here. table is particularly tight and weak, welcome to the $5 2K world. I mean, you know, the $11 10K. I'm opening this. Yeah, for sure. This is the best <laughs> three points of my life. Oh, um, that's hilarious. Uh, and everybody's Nailed it. What the hell kind of play is that from King Queen? Who in the... <laughs> who does that? Who the hell? Uh, yeah, so that dog... Jonathan Little's an absolute crusher, so it's nice to have him. Yeah, I agree, and I always love coaching. playing right after sessions like this, because I feel like my, my brain's warmed up. I'm thinking through things, and, and so it's a good way to start your session for sure. Right. All right, guys, this is it. What's up, Mike? You want to give a gist? He was saying Narco Cop was playing about, he pipping about 28% of hands. He had been very aggressive in this uh, $10 buy-in, and here are the options to fold, to call, to raise to 1200 raise the what? Wait a minute, he made it 800, and my man's given options to 12 and 1400 apples. So yep. it's already getting uh, kind of spicy. <laughs> That's so nasty. To be on a site with these other crushers, you know, well-known poker public figures is pretty exciting, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I didn't mention that when I was kind of giving a little intro here, too. You know, Assassinato, Matt Affleck, John Little, um, all coaches on the site, so very highly respectable. Quality poker content. Yep, Evan Jarvis as well, you know, Jarvis. Murder, Evan Jarvis, Matt Affleck, Assassinato, John Little.
Uh, so I guess that just makes sense. He just had the ace of clubs in his hand. That's interesting, though. I thought that was interesting. You, you didn't do that bad. 45. I like how you just pat me on the back. You didn't do that bad. Well, yeah, good job, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> the back. Uh, you remember, I got the higher score in the first one. I got the higher score in the first one. So, you know, we're one for one, buddy. I just want to know. I'm calling, guys. <laughs> Let's see if we're good. Similar situation. I think it's All right, guys, we're checking that guess. Oh, for fuck's sake. When you're facing a min raise or just a touch more than a min raise, and there's an anti in play, which is going to be the case in most tournaments, I think, going forward, you want to defend pretty wide. If your opponent's making a two. All right, cool. Uh, you're going 1400. I'm going 1400, guys. I'm gonna go call with the arm and this that. All right, and I would fold the game though, for the record, in case that's <laughs> the winning game. Uh, you won. <laughs> you win. I, 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 I have to concede. You win. 14k. Uh, 14k, let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> this is a pretty rough spot. Damn it. <laughs> mm hmm. Where do you go get my chat? <laughs> get my chat. They like, they like, they like naughty things. They like just beer. Alcohol, you know. All right, let's do a. Uh, I can do a ten dollar ACR. A ten dollar ACR giveaway, courtesy of my man Toe, for me beating that ass heads up <laughs> in this. Sorry, <laughs> no, we'll do this. We'll do. We'll have to do it at least once a week, man. And then you know, uh, I'll, I'll, we'll do it. We'll do it every week, a couple times. So it's tough. I guess we got to give out ten bucks to each, each other's communities. <laughs> We'll just do our own ten ten dollar free roll for each. Or is that does that sound fair? Yes. Do you know what this means? You win. I give his chat ten bucks. Take it. You so that's cool because animal. we have two ties and then a win from you and a win from me. This is like the epic battle. It's perfect. It's great. <laughs> yeah, we we're, we're, we're even Steven. This is awesome. Take it. I love it. You know Stop. We got a giveaway going. Let's run the giveaway for the ten dollar ACR winner. Closing the giveaway. Drawing the winner, my man. Sebs are getting the $10 ACR giveaway for this one. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, I'm sorry, Justin. What's We're going to try that again without the mute yeah. button, chat box. <laughs> yeah. You get the spiel. Pokecoach.com. It's fucking Saturday. Six has had some technical difficulties, and then I mute fail right out the gate. You know what kind of show this is. Oh, you were muted right out the gate there? No. So if you want to see the intro, check out Six's stream. 
<laughs> you can, yeah, you can, if you're watching the multi-link. Yeah, you can hear it on my stream. Experts with PC in the chat, guys. Study says the stream. We're back again. Justin Saliba here, longtime study partner of me and Sixes, content creator on um, PokerCoaching.com, um, all around Coach cash game as well. and tournament crusher. Where we go? Yeah, it's um, pretty cool. Just a little quick backstory. I'm sorry. Uh, Justin's a good friend. Like. Two years ago, uh, you know, I kind of ran into him. We got some mutual friends here in the area. And it was about the same time I got, became friends with Toe as well. So we all been on this journey together. And this is back in the day when Toe was grinding $3 freeze outs, mm -hmm. pre-registering them and stuff, you know, and I had like a $13 ABI or something. So yeah, we've both, we've all come a long way. We've so come it's, a, a long way in the last three years, guys. Yeah, yeah so it's pretty cool, man. From from five dollar ABI to one hundred <laughs> the whole way, <laughs> right? So good times, man. Absolutely. So yeah, Justin, you want to introduce yourself? You want to say anything? Uh, thanks for having me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've known these guys for a long time. I've been watching the stream, so excited to be here. You know, I'm a big uh, big poker coaching fan. I'll make some. Um, my background is definitely like a six max cash, so all the stuff I make for the sites mostly. Uh, mostly in cash games, but um, I think kind of like, you know, I've been talking tournaments a lot with these guys and and then kind of in March, I switched over and really started playing tournaments. So, um, you know, quarantine was starting, the games were getting really good. Um, and then I was, originally I started playing like really grinding tournaments hard because I was just trying to prepare for the summer. I knew I wanted to play like the live WSOP events. And so I was like, okay, I'm gonna put in a lot of sessions online, you know, put in a couple months of just like a tournament grind. And then, you know, obviously everything went online. so. Since March, I've kind of just been on the on the full full time tournament <laughs> grind, so yeah. it's been fun. I got him over to the dark side, you know, and it just ships the warm up on the side as he's playing two five cash. <laughs> right, you know, like don't get it's it. always fun. That's always fun. <laughs> uh, having like I don't remember what the month was, but it was like almost a six figure month. You just missed it. Yeah, <laughs> holy yeah. shit! FT FT the special twice and then won the warm up in like. Less than a month. God, so was, the dream. Life like, heat. It was beautiful. Yeah, it was super. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah, <laughs> just, like, just like winning everything. Like lucky, you know. Yeah. Like winning every time, like had, had getting getting bad, you win. Getting good, you win. You're gonna win the month. <laughs> so then, that's all, where I've got all my money in this game. <laughs> yeah, click buttons, funny. and it just worked out okay. And, all right, guys, so you know how this works. We're going to draw random winners from my stream and a random winner from Six's stream. We're going to have you guys compete for $5, either ACR or PayPal, whatever works best for you. Uh, you can let us know. Keyword's going to be poker coaching in the chat. No space, no exclamation point. You should be ready to go now. Uh, we'll let that draw. While we're doing that, we'll pick a random quiz on the site. Uh, we'll ask what the person of the hour is going to do. We'll ask the audience what they're going to do. The three of us will say what we're going to do, and then we'll see what the coach does and uh, go from there. Yep, so give you guys a little bit of time to get in there and uh, hop in. But yeah, man, this is my crew. Every time I go to Vegas, I'm staying with these guys and we're traveling around grinding tournaments and stuff, so. Yeah, when are you coming back? When are you coming back? I know. <laughs> Soon, man, I will come back. I mean, whenever they get the series. He needs yeah. a reason to come I mean, on this way. I need a, yeah, I need a reason to fly out. I'm hoping the Bellagio will fly. run like a mini series for their like typical December stuff. Yeah, I know the Venetian's running a series right now because the Venetian's the running something. Yeah, yeah, just over there the other night, sweating the guy. Yeah, like Listen. dude, like the, they're like crushing the guarantees. Like I wouldn't want to go play live, but I think they, I think it was like three twenty or three forty, hmm. and it was like forty two k up top or something like that. Like Woo. it just like crushed the guarantee. Yeah, wow. yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I have no interest in playing live right now either. Yeah, awesome. they're getting a ton of people, <laughs> getting a lot of numbers out there. I'm sure the games are good, but yeah, I'm with you. Stick to the computer. Stick to now. Coop says, Jess, Justin will see me in a 6 max WSOP one day. Nice. He aspires to grind against you. That's what's up, my dude. Sweet. You'll make it. Um, uh, Jay Coop, just a friend of the streams. Sweet. Good guy, man. He's part of the communities. How's that um, poker and the virus? Uh, but the virus, I mean, the people who can't win online are, strip, are flowing to the casinos, and it's doing really well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's, there's booming there. But, like, if you can stay home, be safe, and play online and and win money then i would definitely suggest that's the way to go yeah i mean it's not it's, it's not like the same experience either i mean they really have like the protectors out and everybody's wearing a mask and you gotta go in a hazmat like suit and there's plexiglass yeah. everywhere it's crazy talk. Yeah. it's like difficult to interact with each other you know it's like a it's a, it's a, it's a much different dynamic so 
Yeah. Right. Bill said, missed the introduction. Just GTO is a longtime friend, study partner of ours, creates content for the site, uh, cash game crusher, tournament crusher, all around life crusher. And uh, there you go. There's a short, sweet answer. Dayton's finest. All right, cool. Dayton's Let's pick finest, one guy. Except he moved to Vegas, so we, 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 we adopted him. Dayton's <laughs> finest. All right, cool. Let's he pick one guy. He came out to see it once and just couldn't leave. He had to move here, buy a house. So he's got roots now. He's not going anywhere. It's true. Um, I do love right. Vegas, man. Great city. Yeah, I love absolutely. It. We're finally getting out of the goddamn heat. Yeah, it's been nice recently. Um, all right, so it looks like there's a bunch of. Yeah, there's a bunch of new ones. New they ones. hooked it up right in time. And since we got Justin, nice. we can mix it up and do some cash ones too. Yeah, six max cash if we can find any. But um, yeah, we can start with the cash. Oh, I see Faraz. There's though. two Faraz. Bad yeah, run yeah. out versus Brian Altman has to be done. I was looking at that one too. Yeah, this has to be done. With. All right, we're going to do 984. And let's pick for this. Poker coaching will give you guys, I think we only got like four or five guys in there. If you're in the chat and want to compete, we'll give you another 10 seconds. Poker oh, coaching in the chat. Wake up. 25% study time. chance. 25% no sleep. chance. The crushers are working. Look at this. <laughs> What's up, Station Space? Surrounded by smoke. Oh, that's uh, chat smoke. I know uh, California, where my whole family is, is, the whole damn state's on fire. Oh, Vendor who is from Team Tobe and hiding out in a hotel has got evacuated from his house. Damn. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah. Oh, B Mill is in there. D B chops. Good morning. All right, let's roll it. You ready? I'm ready. I see a couple legends. Boom. We so beats. beats we so new follower. Beats a common one. Dude, he wins every single week. He does. Get that run good. Nice. We don't have to check. Like we know him. he's there. He's always there. Mm -hmm. Another. Uh, we actually got a new follower who uh, just followed the channel, got in there, is active, and he's going to get rewarded with an opportunity. I like that kind of shit. Nice. Let's go. Uh, thank you for the follow, Poker Fan Mendo Bruce. Thank you for the four months resub. Um, cool. Ready to run the uh, yeah, let's have a bad run out versus Brian Altman. Sounds like hell, so let's do it. Sounds like hell. Let's play it. <laughs> this hand is from a student of mine from Vegas who was playing the WSOP online 1k event on Sunday. And the villain here is Brian Altman, who's very good. Um, Attorney Reg, who's been crushing the live WPT scene recently. So Brian opens from the low jack, and we are in the big blind with King Jack off the call. Flop comes King Ken Seven with a club draw. We check to Brian, who does pretty standard C bet of one third. Turn your volume down. And our options here are going to be to call to check raise to 2500 or to check raise to 3600. all right beats here we go beats us let's take down that b altman b arch <laughs> <laughs> definitely not that but yeah uh, <laughs> the beast all right here we are uh eight two bigs deep king on board 900 on the flop uh it's a little draw heavy what are we doing beats what What's doing, up, guys? guys? What are we doing in this spot? This is a chance to be a chat nope. pro, guys. If you're new to the stream, get your answers out there. Let us know what you would do. This is the place to make mistakes and or get better. <laughs> My dude says station it off. Start stationing. Okay. Just call him. I'm raising pot for sure. Duh. Is that even a question? So you're going 3.6K? Not Ooh, scared. Okay. Not scared. Not scared. <laughs> What are, what are we doing here, chat? Don't be shy. Chat with Brooke, Riso is raising. What it's size are you raising? I was streaming on the uh, Global Channel last night, and everyone's like, get JL to come over to, to, to Global since he got banned from ACR. I was like, I don't know, man. I don't know if there's enough up top over here for him you know, to not play on any day but a Sunday. And uh, they, were like, they were talking about how JL was scared to come to the Global Streets. Scared. So That's that what it is. Pretty funny. He would fucking run like a 200% like <laughs> ROI or something. I can't even imagine. Like, it's a beast. Uh, Ginger, PTR, and OMC. Welcome, OMC. Raising to 2.5. Give me uh, G-Man Meatball, River City Man, and Rad Dad all calling. Beat says, I'm going for some protection and raising to 2.5K. So that's the route we're going. That's what team does. So you're going uh, 2.5K? Uh, we got we still raising as well. I'm asking what size he's doing. So he just said raise. 
Go um, raise instruction says smaller raise like 2.2 to 2.5. You should have a lot of semi bluffs in your range here is what it's structured thinks too many crushers on global chop says <laughs> uh chops is just calling as well waffles off good morning man you calling all right so he's going wait a minute, he hasn't set a size yet uh oh we so it's 2.5 x he says okay cool calling. um what are you doing sixes uh i'm just calling I mean, I think in this position, um, I don't know if we want to play for sacks. I guess at 40, it's close. We block um, if he does have some gut shots, some ace queens, uh, stuff like that. We do have a blocker to that. Uh, I think this is just going to be a fine hand to call. Protects the times we want to have a seven, a 10, and if some of our other draws in our range actually having top pair is nice. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to have this in my calling range. How about you, Justin? Yeah, I think both options are reasonable. Like, if we have king-queen, we're probably just, like, almost always raising the spot. Right. I mean, I think, like, I think Altman's going to use, like, a big bet on this board sometimes, too. So, like, versus small bet, I feel, like, much more inclined to raise here. Um, because he's going to open, you know, king-six suited through king-nine suited. And sure. probably just bet small for value a lot of the time. So, um, I wouldn't be surprised, like, in theory, if we're actually supposed to, like, I'm actually really surprised and kind of impressed by your chats that they're thinking about raising these hands because most people, like, just auto call a lot of the top pairs. Mm -hmm. And, like, we have to be raising like, a reasonable amount of them. So. Especially they're better kickers. Like, yeah, yeah, I, think, yeah, I would use, like, queen, king, queen, but king, jack is, seems like it blocks enough and it's good enough. But I can see the merit in raising, especially yeah, when you I, go I mean, so calling, small. Calling for sure. is definitely fine. Like, there's, not, there's absolutely no issue with calling here, but I'm, like, impressed by the chats that are like, it's fucking 2.5, 2.5. the money, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it, that, I, I like it, like, you know. I, I'm trying to think of what, what would Faraz do in this spot. This is where you get I, leveling because you want to try to get scored yeah, for the yeah. well, like, well, because, like, Faraz is obviously, like, known to be extremely aggressive. Mm -hmm. So right. he can raise thinner for value, like, consistently. And then Altman is really loose and aggressive, too. So, like, I wouldn't be surprised if, like, Faraz is trying to raise the spot almost every time because, like, He's going to just be bluffing a ton here, too. So he's right. probably, he might take king nine suit and start raising. You know, mm. King nine of arms. Just the bottom side. Start of raising range. those, too. So. And that makes a lot of sense because he can be just c-betting so much of his range here and knows Faraz is aggressive enough to check raise, you know, a lot of his draws, a yeah. lot of different kind of hands. So he's going to feel compelled to call, call off much wider with some 10x. He's never folding queens. Queens, you know, he's never folding a worse king. Yeah. All of his draws. So we can get value from so many hands. So actually, yeah, it does make a lot of sense. When you decide to go with the check raise route here, do you find yourself, this is going to be a little spoiler for, for the streets, but do you find yourself barreling turns a lot, even the scare cards? Or do you find yourself bet check, you know, three bet checking? I mean, if you like raise here and, and like an ace comes, I think we're like probably going to check range, like on an ace. Sure. What about I mean, like a queen like, club? Like a ten's terrible for sure. us, too. Sure. Um, so there's going to be certain. There's gonna be certain boards that we like check, like do a lot of checking on, mm -hmm. um, and then obviously like a blank, like a two of hearts. I think we're just gonna be using like a really, like probably a pretty big bet size. Sure, polarizing our range in that yeah. draw. Yeah, the draws. trying to stack a worst king. Yeah. Yep. Um. So yeah, we're going two point five k, and I actually really like it, man. Let's find I out. I got, I got debated. I think it's better. Ooh, he thinks call. So close though, right? Seven and close ten between a call and a check raise. You would call? I would lean towards a check call here because we do not have a club in our hand. Okay. And there are a lot of bad turn cards for us that has a tilting make it mouse. really hard to continue with our hand. Does it? Yeah. I think with King Queen here, I'm definitely check raising. <laughs> and of course, the two pairs and sets we could have. But um, I think this one's right on the border where if you were to look at Pile Solver, it's pretty split on check raising this hand but with the club it really does like the check okay. raise now there's just going to be a lot more turn cards that end up being a club that <laughs> we're comfortable continuing on so i would uh definitely check call here uh but i would not say check raising is a mistake it's just my next second option and if we do check raise here um we don't want to go too big um we just need to go nice. you know we're we're a little deep here, so we're going to do more than kind of the 2.5 I've suggested in previous situations. Um, it's also a pretty dynamic board. We don't want to give our opponent too good of a price to peel. 
So we'll go with 2,500 here for the times we are going to check raise. Um, that is the decision my student chose to make in game. And Brian is definitely a player that makes sense to kind of go for value thin here because he's good enough to, you know, consider calling light here um, and being suspicious of bluffs. So um, we went ahead with the check raise here, got called, and the turn was a jack. So now our options in the turn are going to be to check to bet 5,800 or to do a smaller block bet of 2,500. <laughs> Pooch okay. wants a knit fold. Uh, Savage Ginger says, of course we know about raising these spots. We're here every week. Don't, nice. don't, hey. don't sleep on them. Don't sleep on them. Hey. <laughs> hey. Uh, we get one of the good cards, though, right? That's a pretty good card for our range. Uh, 7750 in the pot. 38.5 in our stack. 21.5 in their stack. What are we doing now, Beats? Trent Brooks says, bet 5,800 down. Make them pay to draw. What are we doing? We so... J. Coop is just checking. Just checks. Okay. Try to both laying down the hurt hammer. What did, what did he say? 5,800. 58. Yes. I think I checked to keep his bluffs in, Smurf says. Hmm. Huge structure says. So there's the first. So I'm seeing a lot of checks. PTR going 2,500. We only got... We only got bets on Team Toe. Poker fan going 58. <laughs> Rollspin going 58. Team the Hurt Mafia Hammer. is Nitte. Team Hurt Hammer. The <laughs> Mafia <laughs> is Nitte. Yeah, we trappy. I'm not going to say Nitte. I'm going to say Trappy. Ginger's trappy. going 5.8. Julius checking. There's one. 5.8. the lone wolf out on the island. My dude Weeso is out here stalling. Beats going 5,800. You so have, buddy? Poker fan. My man going 5,800. I like that. I like that. Bruce likes check raise again. Double check raise. After that, put pressure on flush draws. Okay. What size do you like, buddy? 2,500 for OMC. I got one check. Poker fan says just GTO would fold. Nope. No. <laughs> nope. It's just strong. Poker fan is strong. <laughs> I'm still waiting for, we, we still says half the bet, but he never puts his, put the, put the bet out there, my dude. It's contemplating. Bit of a good moment. I'm trappy. I mean, happy to check. So Fifty-eight hundred. That's what beats doing too. All right, cool. They're both going fifty-eight. Uh, personally, I'm definitely betting here. I think we can uh, go into larger size. I think some of his range picks up equity. Um, and yeah, I mean, if he does have a king, he's gonna be able to. He's probably not folding anyway. Uh, yeah, I, I would tend to probably go larger, but I wonder if we go 25. I'm so happy. My, my new Casio, which is actually twice as big as the last one, came in the mail yesterday. Casio <laughs> says we're going like 47.50, so 60%. I'm definitely big betting. Um, yeah. 60%. Wait, this is like 75%. This is just two thirds or so. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, pro I'm probably going to go to larger sizes and just try to stack them, to be honest. <laughs> um, I think that sets up a better SPR. Probably. Julius thinks Faraz is leveling us because he put 5,800 before 2,500. <laughs> in the, in the options down below. Yeah. The cup holder has not arrived, Julius. You can notice I don't Oops. have a drink on my table either. Um, we need that one stack. Like yeah, I think I think we have a big here probably. Um, yeah, I agree. Like all one's range here is like, like a, a lot of it doesn't mind checking back here. So I, like it doesn't really make sense. Like the jack is not going to make bet a lot on. So if we check, he's, if he's not going to bet a lot, like obviously that's terrible for us. So I think we want to bet big. He has a lot of like strong hands with the draw, um, like a lot of like high equity hands that aren't going to fold for any price. So and our our hands definitely good enough to stack off. Like, like we're going to lose like a reasonable amount here. I mean not a reasonable amount. Like if we bet and if we bet and he calls and like club comes, like we're still stacking off. Um, but. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's going to be pretty sick. Right. What up, guy? VIP, good to see you, buddy. All right, I'm ready. 5800. Uh, one thing. Uh, we got a question. What if he raises after we bet big? I guess we should kind of hold on that because nah. in case that happens. No. But I mean, we're just nah. not folding this. We can't, <laughs> we can't worry about ace-queen. At that SPR, think about what's going to be in the pot. It's also, like, like what ace-queens call the check raise? Like only ace-queen of clubs? I don't think a bear ace-queen just... Maybe ace queen with the ace of clubs, something like that. For sure, I mean he can definitely have, yeah. Yeah, he could have ace of clubs, queen. Maybe well, never, ever, 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 ace queen of clubs, right? Ace queen of spades. Our check raise was only two point 
five X or something like that. He's never folding a gut shot. Yeah. So uh, checking, I think, is a mistake only because like we don't want to let club or our queen X hand get there for free. That'd be tragic, right? Like we right. get value from all those hands. Um, so yeah, fifty eight hundred it is. Let's see it. Woo. So this is actually what? a spot we want to check quite a bit uh, on this card. This card is generally just not great for us. Um, you know, it completes a lot of straights our opponent could have. Um, Eight nine got you know, two. Pocket jacks can get there. Ace queen. It's also just a lot of bad river cards that it's going to be really hard to figure out what to do on. And because of that, we we don't hate just kind of checking here. We also are blocking some of the hands that we think Brian might be able to continue with that are worse than ours. Mm -hmm. Whereas if we had King-10 here, I would be much more likely to bet because, you know, Brian could definitely have a hand like Queen-Jack, definitely have a hand like Ace-Jack. So, <laughs> so King-10 would make more sense. It has more hands that can get value out of. It needs some more protection. Um, but mostly we're doing it for value because we're unblocking some of you know, the hands, the worst hands you could call with. Um, in game, um, my student decided to bet here, which I definitely don't think it's awful by any means. Um, so I would give some credit for that play, but um, I do think checking would be better here. As played, um, opponent calls, and the river comes <laughs> the eight like of One of the clubs. not worst cards. So our options now are to go all in or to check. Beat says, what alien took over for Oz's brain? He got us on <laughs> that one. He got all of us. We're going to need to run sad, this one. But we're we're going to run this one. We're going to run, we're gonna run oh, this yeah. end after the stream. <laughs> we can. Right away. Yeah. Right away. I don't know. I mean, like the jack's obviously not good for us. So we need to like use a big bet size when we bet. But I'm surprised we're Like this hand's so strong. Yeah, I agree. But we'll find out later. We'll get there. Yeah, we're definitely we're gonna running run. this one. Yeah. Mark it. Yeah, we're going to see it's a pure We're looking for pile hands. This is one of them. I'm writing it. A pure bat. Yeah, we can do it right after this. So I'm curious. Cool. This is 984. All right, guys. What are you doing here? Club comes. Bad card. We jam. We check. What are we doing? What's going on? Smurf says check call. Waffles Ops just jamming. DB Chops is check calling in a sad, sad river. <laughs> You're just One checking. Yeah, me. feels bad, man. Like nine of clubs, Bet maybe. call for me as well. Feeling better? Check off for PTR. Drug stain, check. Deep ball <laughs> checking. Poker fan checking. Jamming only gets Save it when you guys stream a pile class. We, we so We don't ever do that. We keep that to ourselves. We're stingy with <laughs> <of> that stuff. <laughs> Girl checking. Everybody checking on teams out. I don't see beats out there yet, though. If I check the turn, I am check calling and crying while I do it. Probably fair to spin. That's actually the interesting line like that I was thinking about. Is like when we check and face a bet, mm. like are we really check calling this in? Tough. I feel like we're check jamming if we check, but I don't know. Ooh. I'm never check jamming. I mean... I mean, we didn't get it. We didn't get the answer. We didn't get the answer from the crew, but I, I'm never check jamming. I, I mean, it depends on what Altman's strategy is. But like, if he's betting with like hot, like reasonably decent equity bets on the turn, like if he bets Ace King, like it's a nightmare not to check jam, you know. Mm. And I don't foresee him checking back Ace King on King. I don't know. Maybe he does. It's 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 interesting as hell. I'm not sure. Judith says continue Wait. checking. So check check check. Uh, getting my instruction from Mike on rounders. Nice. Wouldn't he be pretty committed? It depends on what size he bets, but I mean, for Check the most part. Chat revoked. No um, call. I'm not, it's not on there, but it's a blocker bet. Terrible. Agent. That's interesting, Lucifer. I actually kind of like the blocker bet. I mean, yeah, I think like a 10% bot. bot. This kind of nice. Right yeah. I actually love the 10% the bet. A 10% bet, bet right here, good. yeah. Good time to try. A good time live to try and talk it out of him, get a read. Hmm. Start talking to Brian. Oh, we bet turn, so maybe maybe ten percent doesn't make that much sense. Beats says ten to find himself jamming in that spot. Is that where you're going with Beats? Is that the final answer? Yeah, it would, that doesn't make much sense when we lead turn. I think it's more if if we had check turn, I think I would like it better. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, like like check check turn ten percent. You're just gonna get bombed on so often. Like I don't know. If we're trying to induce, it might not be bad, but final answer jam for Beats. 
He's jamming, and we're checking. So, uh, Here we go. Yeah. This is the moment of truth, guys. This is where... We have guy... a seven and a five, points-wise. So do we. We have we the same... Uh, oh, we have this the same... Oh, yeah. This is the first time we're uh, deviating. Ready? All right. Yep. Moment of truth, to army. Rut row. So I definitely Shut. stand and lean. I'm just going to check here. A lot. Everything just got there. Straights got there. Flushes got line? there. I think it's going to be hard to get a value here. And interesting enough, when I looked this hand in Pio, I thought that this oh. card was just so good for our range that it just wanted us to bet just about everything, including this <laughs> hand, that, um, um, that we can just go ahead and shove here. And I think that's pretty hard to do in game. And it's also really relying on the opponent to play perfectly and to be able to call with the perfect one card hands with the right blockers. So maybe, you know, maybe Ace King with the Ace of Clubs it expects them to call. And, you know, maybe even Ace Jack with Ace of Clubs. And there's there's just a lot of assumptions there. And our opponent's not a robot. Our opponent's not going to be able to play absolutely just like a solver so i think to simplify things here i'm definitely just checking even though a solver might say to go ahead and bet i think that's just a more realistic play um but because because a solver would support shoving here i am going to give some decent points there still um so go ahead and check um luckily our opponent just checked back had they considered betting then i think this is a pretty player dependent spot I think versus a player like Brian is very capable, so calling here is definitely reasonable. But against some other players who may not Just have it in them to pull the trigger here and turn some some you know reasonable hands into bluffs, then I might consider just folding here. It's very very player dependent. Uh, luckily Brian just checked and he ended up having Ace King, and we took down the pot. So Whee! the real key lesson of this one is. In the river. To you know, consider <laughs> playing more bluff catching and pot controlling rather than blowing the pot when there's going to be a lot of bad turn cards for us. Um, whereas you know, again, when we have the jack of clubs, we are just going to find it a lot more comfortable to continue. You know, imagine the same run out had we had king jack with the jack of clubs. Well, I think that's going to be a lot easier of a check call on the river, um, and we're just going to get to realize our equity a bit more easy. Either. Probably want to check call, check call, check call. Yeah. Uh, we did it. We so shipped it. Congratulations, buddy. Make sure to whisper me on Twitch your ACR uh, screen name, and I'll ship you five bucks. And yeah, um, we're gonna run another one. That was a fun one. That, that was, was a fun one. one. That, that was a really turn good on one. So interesting. Yeah. Faraz is getting us. And we so even got to it. see the showdown hand because Faraz Whoops. likes to leave you hanging. He doesn't show you the showdown hand. Well, he oh, only does it hand. when he has a student hand or something I've noticed. He's got to do his own. Yeah. yeah. That was a good one, guys. All right. So I'm going to leave poker coaching in there for now. Um, so poker coaching in the chat, all one word, no spaces, no exclamation point in my chat and Six's chat. And uh, you guys can be the next one to compete. Beats, congratulations on winning your shot. And uh, good job there. Good job representing the army, buddy. Um, so make sure you get that. While they're doing that, we are going to pick another quiz. Uh, you want to do Lexi? I like doing the, the coaches we don't do all the time. Like Matt and JL, we, there's just so much content. We do them all the time. Yeah, yeah. Right. Good time. Right, yeah, Lexi's had some really good quizzes. Yeah, Tristan uh, Wade I think we did uh, some as well. Yeah, Tristan Wade's are great. He's had some really tough spots in his, man. Mm. Just, just coaches well, we don't, we don't know as well. Right. I like haven't done the Evan one in, in, in a while. Because well, it's a cash game. We'll switch over to cash game a little bit with Sister Justice here for sure. Yeah, let's do a cash game one now. Let's do a cash. <laughs> uh, Evan Jarvis, uh, one of the newer ones, won three cash is an option. Sure. Um, want to do 990? Ace Queen. Yeah, 990 is good. All right. A little 1 3 game. So this is going to be a cash game one. I see the poker coaching ones going out there, guys. Get in here, your chance to be a chat pro. If you're just joining us late, uh, this is PokeCoaching.com, study session stream, right. XMH point PC in my chat. 
PC. Yeah, ship you. Exclamation point PC and six of chat. You get a link to sign up for free. Uh, the site hosted by Jonathan Little, but it's got a wealth of content creators and coaches on there. All three of us create content on there. Barrage Jock, like you saw, you? Tristan Wade, Lexi Gavin, Matt Affleck, Jonathan Little, J Jonathan Jaffe, Acevedo, uh, Giraffe Ranger, <laughs> Evan Jarvis. I mean, just a wealth of people crushing the game on all levels. Um, so make sure you sign up. You can sign up for free. And if you feel so inclined, you like this content, you can sign up for the premium and get just much more content. Live webinars so you can talk to these guys hands-on, one-on-one. I almost always do the Wednesday webinar with Affleck. And uh, shout-out to Affleck, man. That guy is an amazing coach. Um, super interactive, super fun. One of the smartest guys I know. Um, really good. Really, really, really good. Highly recommend it. And some girls, says Ginger. Yeah, they got Lexi. Yeah, Lexi's Lexi. fantastic. She's fantastic. Oh, yeah. Can't wait for some draft ganger quizzes. That would be cool. Oh, that would be good. <laughs> 14 DMC with coaching. the follow. Thank you, brother. Good to see you, man. Uh, what are you saying, Justin? Structure. Thank you for the follow. Welcome. Yeah, I was saying like, it's like a sweet lineup of coaches. You know, like there's so many like strong players. And, you know, they, like you're talking about Affleck's webinars. Like those Wednesday webinars are great. You They're know? fantastic. You put so much time into Preparing the he does a really good job of, of making it fun and making it interactive and throwing it to the crowd. And he does yeah. a he's a great coach. Um, yeah, but there's a lot of good players who aren't great coaches. Matt Affleck is a great coach. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. Totally agree. Um, absolutely. Um, Are right, you ready to roll it? I am ready to roll it. Let's do it. G Man Meatball, what up, buddy? Representing <laughs> the army. With the screen name of the Talk. day. J Coop, he did it. It's karma, my dude. I think I forgot to send him the five spot from last week, and that Jess message is like, oh, my bad. And then out of left field, he wins this giveaway. Uh, I love it. Doubling him. up. Bruce says he Double, doesn't play cash. Uh, I don't play cash either unless Justin yells at me enough to where I go <laughs> out with him like twice, <laughs> twice a year. I love playing cash. You can get me to play cash. <laughs> I'll fucking definitely grind cash. Come on, Toe. You have such an edge. Last time we played was New Orleans. Oh, really? The last yeah. time you guys played cash, Toe played cash, that's it? Yeah. Four lanes, Jesus. Yeah. That was because I busted the tournament in two hands. <laughs> <laughs> Justin was uh, on on uh, one of the alternates, and I busted like three hands, and I got enough flush <laughs> against the, the full house, like three hands in, and I go running over to the thing. I'm like, don't, don't, don't come into the tournament. <laughs> and a lot of fun that night, though. It was fun. Uh, you crushed it. Hilarious. All right, guys, let's, uh, who at? G-Man, you out there? G-Man, I know you're out there. There he is. Okay, we'll do it once I figure out how. Cool. Um, ready to kick it off? Uh, yeah, we have Jay Coop competing. He won the Lexi one last week. So, yeah, let's do it. Catch is great. Just not over 2.5. It's tough over 2.5, Julius. Let's do it. Let's do it. Hello, everyone. Evan Jarvis here for PokerCoaching.com. Today, we are reviewing a 1-3 No Limit Hold'em cash game hand that I played at Casino Niagara. Uh, this is the start of a late night session. I think I set my schedule so I could wake up early and catch the late night rush. I think this hand starts at about 2 a.m. and we end up playing till 6 a.m. Um, I thought it would it's be a great idea because I get all the tired Ooh. people and all the drunk people. And truthfully, I found out the best action tends to happen around last call. So, you know, between 10 p.m. and 2, 2.30 2 a.m. So. If uh, you're thinking about the best times to grind, True. I would advise those times as opposed to trying to catch the wrap game or catching the afternoon game. Anyway, let's get into the action. Let's get stacking. There are a bunch of limps. Shocker. Uh, late night games. What do you expect? <laughs> what should you do with King-10 off on the button? Should you fold, call, raise to 20, or raise to 30? Mm, what are we doing, guys? Isoing or flatting or just folding? Definitely some good tips, Bluff Love. And like I said, it's, it's absolutely every version of my nightmare it's cash game it's past my bedtime like it's drunk assholes i guess drunk asses are cool uh, the <laughs> the table. i don't this. mind that so much you're facing five limbs five limbs <laughs> like none of this is none of this is what i like this is where i'm I'm, I'm, I'm glaring at justin across the table <laughs> like, you just like grab the whiskey and have fun and shoot shit oh know? sure yeah all right. Play some occasional bomb pots. You know, <laughs> yeah. Try, try to get a straddling, do anything you can to right. big, make the game bigger. Mm. Meatball calling, so that's what we're going to roll with. <laughs> Rad Dad going 30. Lots of, a couple of ISOs and a call. Smurfs a going calls. 20. 
Somebody said, Evan likes to build pots pre. He's making this 30. Fuck it. This is cash. So pop it to 30 uh, is what Jacob's doing. That's mm. what our contest is doing. We got a bunch of 30s, a couple of Yo, 20s, fuck a it. few calls, Make it 30. and then uh, 419 DMC. Oh, he's calling kept knit folding. Justin, you know what knit means? Too many limpers. You know, Nobody it's an actual acronym? Fold yeah. for 20. Oh, ah, no. I didn't know either until a few months ago. It means not in there. Not in there. I was like, oh shit, it actually, it's actually the thing. Yeah, yeah. I thought you were asking <laughs> me because like, I'm probably really, 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 really aggressive. Like, do you even know what a knit is? No, no, no. <laughs> it's actually a thing. I learned that like a month ago. I didn't know. Okay. Uh, calling, 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 calling. A bunch of calling, a bunch of raising. It's pretty mixed in there. Our man of the hour, Meatball, is calling. Meatball is calling, and calling. our guy is making it 30. Toad definitely calling. I, for me, like, Ice Wing's cool, but, like, for me, generally, the more limpers there are, the more I'm likely to limp behind and then ISO. Like, this ISO gets really expensive. Our C-Bit gets really expensive. Our double barrels get really expensive. Um, the truth and I got position. hand. The <clears throat> truth is we probably should just fucking gold, right? I mean. No, no, you can't muck. I mean, make it 30? We either got to make it 30. I'm not making it 20. I'd probably make it Yeah, 30. yeah, yeah. So, I, yeah, you don't I mean, in the game, I don't, yeah. yeah, we're going to go multi-way. So like, in these games, it. like, you know, these guys are limping 10 7 0. So, like, we need to over limp a pretty wide range in the button here because, like, you're not going to make <laughs> mistakes that they are. Like, when it becomes king high and people pile money, you're not going to, like, you're not going to get stacked. But, like, if it comes, you know, king 10 deuce and they have, like, King seven suited, you're gonna stack them because like they're gonna m make big mistakes. Over so massive, we, we need yeah. to be the same. Sure. I think we, I think we should for just overcall. Like, um, like Toe, you, you kind of alluded to it, but like when there's a lot, a lot of more ranges, like our ice range has to be tighter. So like, I'm definitely ice swing king queen though, but I think like we just overlimp like a really wide range. Like I'm never, I'm never mucking like seven five suited. Here. Oh yeah, I was thinking like nine no, seven suited things like that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely position. Like these guys are just gonna make massive errors so we just want to play as many hands as possible mm -hmm. and this is similar for the tournament players to like early stages of a tournament right like uh, they play a lot like these cash games so like this is a great spot to limp with 100 bigs in a tournament too with like nine seven suited seven five suited true and stack because limp, 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 limp. like you just know the players are going to be really bad so <laughs> play possible. sure but from, from that angle like it's more like in tournaments when you have a really bad player like open the low jack and you're on the button and it's like, we're just going to beat them up a ton because, like, they're going to make massive mistakes with deep stack post swap. So, Raddit says his hand is playing so well, won't you weigh? Which is partly true. The only thing is, we're getting mad, mad odds, and we have the button. So, it's just, it's too good mathematically. Yeah, uh, I guess in that case, it's just 30 for me then. It just makes a lot more sense. We all play these games, and 20 is going four ways, three ways for sure, <laughs> at minimum. Minimum. Just pot it. I mean, yeah, I, I don't know, know, man. Calling just gets in a very questionable territory. Um, I don't know. All right. Um, I'm sorry. Tell what you're saying. So I'm going to cut you off. No, I'm good. I'm calling. Ready to go. Oh, you're calling. Uh, and yeah, we're going. J. Coop is blasting the 30. I like that oh, shit. Here we Let's go do right it. away. Let's do it. 30. Got him. When Piss. we think about the types of hands that people are going to be. Oh, we got 10 points. Here, Both? are certainly going to be okay. a lot of yeah, worse yeah. tens, weaker tens that people are like. So I have a stern word for Ed when we throw him the host later. Um, and in terms of kings, there may be some worse kings in terms of the suited kings people are limping in with. We may see the occasional king nine. Uh, but overall, we're probably going to see more better kings than worse kings. Maybe some king jacks. Maybe some king queens. We can assume that ace king is getting raised and ace ten. Uh, maybe limping in, maybe getting raised. Now, that being said, if we go for a large enough raise size, we can probably pressure King Queen out of the pot anyway. So going with a raise size to about 30 here is a really good way to most likely just pick up the pot preflop, um, knock out all those small pairs and knock out those ace rags, and just end the hand now, picking up uh, six big blinds, which is a pretty good result. Um, that being said, calling is also a fine option because we dominate a lot of weaker hands. Um, and we have the button for the rest of the hand, so we can kind of just play our hand from a speculative fashion. I don't like folding, and I don't like raising to 20, because that's just going to get a multi-way pot, and we're not going to really knock out any of those better hands. So early on in the session, I opted to go with an overlimp, but going with a large raise size here, especially with a king blocker and 10 blocker, a uh, great way to just take it down and build an aggressive image as well, with a very legitimate hand for coming in with a large raise. Small blind calls, and we have ourselves a family pot.
Dun, dun, dun. Lop is pretty <laughs> decent for us. King King Deuce giving us trips. Action checks around to the cutoff, who is a nice, friendly young lady who likes to play some late night poker. Because uh, I saw her there three nights in a row. Uh, she leads out for 20 into 24. Actions on you. Trip Kings. What should you do? Should you fold? Call. Raise to 60 or go all in. A little disappointed in Evan in that. In these quizzes, he tends to have phenomenal player names like Hot Pants. Nicknames. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's funny. Apple Bottom Jeans Apple is the Bottom one. <laughs> that was the name. I'll never forget. I, I saw I'll this pop go, go uh, eight ways, and this guy bet 20, and six is just like, like he was in a nightmare. He's like, oh, man. My God. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, man. I mean, I can't have uh, – well, I mean, I'm not going to get into it. Let's. I'll let the – chat so everybody's call 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 somebody has two two we got a bunch of calls <laughs> there wonka what's up buddy it's been a long time beats us how many one dollar chips do they have we'll tell you how active they are interesting actually little table reading there little table leveling call for 419 rad yes has call hand doesn't miss protection g-man no our man of the hour raising it to 60. he's getting greedy only raise out there he's out on his island getting aggressive Peanut Flush is calling. DB Chops call. What are we doing here? Oh, Jay Coops is just calling. Yep, Jay Coops is just calling here. Okay. Um. Hmm. Still an option to get called by worse kings, even if we raise. I mean, in a pot like this. I mean, there's certainly like king six suited and shit like that. Um. Cheap but are we going to lose under pairs? Yeah, I mean. Are we going to get value when we do raise from worse? Definitely think it's possible. I don't think with the underpairs, like, are they going to bet twice? I guess is the question with the underpairs when we call here. Um, but what, uh, what worse hands would we be raising with? You know, even as a black I don't think I'm raising with much worse. Raise. But I would raise, like, I don't know. For I me, I think I'm leaning toward call in this spot because the board's so fucking dry and I just don't think we have many options. If I had a better king, like king-queen, like we keep using that as an example, as like the bottom of our top pair, or top range, rather. Um, I would more likely raise king-queen, I think, to get caught by worse kings. And then again, if this board was like king-king-queen, two clubs or something, you know, raise because you're going to get caught by the flush draw and and it's a more wet board. I think I'm just flatting here, though. I'll I don't see very many other options myself. What do you think, Justin? I mean, yeah, you're the, I, okay. Yeah, cool. yeah, just flatting as well. No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah same here. I just yeah, don't see, good. like, when we raise, like, what would our bluffs be on a board? There's no flush draws or anything like that. Overlimping, they can overlimp king, queen, king, jack. I mean, I know they should be squeezing, but we see that we force all kind of worse hands that might call 20 to fold. So, yeah, I think calling is just what we need to do here. What hands would you be raising here? Do you agree with the general range that I gave? I mean, if I un maybe two, maybe twos when we unblock all the kings. <laughs> sure. Yeah, if we have pocket twos, we unblock the kings, and then I would expect we can get action from a king X a lot in a family way pot. I like that. So, I mean, I don't know if there's anything else, you know. Only two, two. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Well, Three combos of raising. Three yeah, three of combos of raises. And then even there, we should probably still just call as well. Then. You know, if they have worse kings, they're just going to pile it anyway. So, yeah. yeah. We should probably just call seven. Thank you for the follow. Sorry. You're good. Um, all right. We are just calling, though, because that's what Jay Coop is doing. Let's We're do raising. It. All right. Uh, what, did me, man? what did Meatball say? Hang on. 60. I'm raising 60. He's going 60. All right. We're calling. In spots like this where we have trips, it can be really easy to think, okay, you know, I want to build a pot, I have trips, I want to make sure I get paid off, and raising can be tempting. Um, but we have to look at how likely we are to get paid if we do that. Um, if we raise, what kind of hands is she continuing with? Probably just kings or a boat if she has pocket twos. And um, we don't do well against most of those hands. If you look at combo-wise, uh, there are way more king queens and king jacks than there are king nine suited king eight suited king seven suited king six suited things like that and also when we raise we're going to draw some attention there um, if however so i don't like raising here and i really don't like going all in because if we do that uh we're just getting called by the better kings where we have three outs um and yeah we're losing a lot of money 
giving away a lot of money. So I don't like raising for those reasons. Um, I do like calling a lot. I don't like folding. Our hand's much too strong. I like calling because that keeps in uh, pair twos, uh, pocket pair, any random thing she's stabbed with, and weaker kings aren't as concerned. Now, what kind of hands would we like to raise the flop with? Pocket twos, which can get paid by all kings. And mm -hmm. I, I kind of think that's it. I kind of think that's <laughs> it. Like if we have king, queen, yes, we can get action from king, jack, and king, ten. But when we have a king, it's less likely our opponent has a king, and that's one of the key cards that will pay us off and give us action. Uh, whereas when we have pocket twos, all the kings are left in play, and it's more likely she has one. So because we have the king blocker and because our king's not that good, we opt to call. If we had pocket twos, we would feel inclined to raise to build that pot and get paid by a king. So everyone else folds, yeah. and the turn is quite sweet. It is another deuce, giving uh, a deuce a full house. Giving pocket two squads, but pocket two's had us beat anyway. And now she bets 25 into 64, a little bit on the smaller side. Uh, action's on you. What should you do? Should you fold, call, raise to 50, or raise to 100? <clears throat> Bruce, does any pair of my bluff? Uh, I don't think they'll bluff twice, though, Bruce. That's the problem. Because when we call king, king, deuce, we just have a ton of a ton of king in our range, right? Um, especially multi-way. Six, did you call Evan before this? Huh? Yeah, no, right. I you can hear. I like. You'll see this exactly a lot, though. We said. tend to be echo chambers for a lot of these quizzes, which is great. Yeah, yeah. It's great. Good. Feels good, man. Good. I feel like right, when we first started doing these quizzes, just in general, we're getting wrecked, like, kind of. We're getting wrecked here and there, but now we, we're all over it. Yeah. We was got wrecked a little bit on that Faraz turn. We did get wrecked on the Faraz. Oh, that's a, yeah. We were all just like a hundred percent. But that one's got an asterisk. Raised. We have to run it ourselves. Yeah, sure. yeah, exactly. He said he ran it. I mean, he like made it sound like the turn was pretty decisive like he took the line he thought yeah. was correct yeah. so <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll find out here a full frequency check. check i don't know we'll have to look at that for sure <laughs> uh bruce ben 50 everyone else just call kept his in position i call because i can still get sacks in on the river poker fan calling meatball calling gill calling bruce changing his answer to call so everyone's calling yeah, the nation, uh, the mafia is just doing nothing. They're just like, you know what? Uh, I'm calling a raise may scare off mid pairs. Call, call, call. Yeah, it's a pretty easy play. Oops, I shouldn't say Wisco, that. thank you for those bits. Back for the giveaways again. I appreciate you, buddy. What's the SPR going to be? The wall calling. Everybody calling. We're just calling. Yeah, we're just calling. I mean, wait, raise we're still waiting calling. for What's the point J, J Coop. Absolutely. Yeah, J Coop's calling as well. So we're just snap calling here. Pretty easy one. I mean, yeah, I don't see no other option. Anybody raising here? I think nope. I don't think there's real merit. I mean, we keep our range wider by calling. We still have like mid pocket pairs, maybe an ace high float, which is probably not too often. But this player may perceive we have that in our range, so we just want to keep our range as wide as possible, and we're in position. You know, you don't hate the min click either lie. I mean, yeah, if you got an opponent, you think that might work against. For sure, I can see it, but I'm, I'm probably never doing it. All right, we're calling. Did you click it? Uh, I did not. I'm ready, though. Ready? All right, let's do Yep. In this spot, we're in a similar spot to the one we were on the flop, except now we're chopping with all kings. So, again, what are we looking to get value from here? Um, a deuce or a random bluff? That's all we're really looking to get value from. And if we raise, a bluff has to fold. And if we raise, a deuce is probably going to know what's up and fold. That being said, if we raise the minimum to 50, there's a chance that um, she'll feel obligated to call because it's such a small price. Uh, the min raise often gets calls that no other raise do. Um, so that's something we can consider. But overall, uh, calling is just the best play. Gives her the best chance to think, oh, maybe a deuce is good. Maybe he has a deuce too. And we can therefore maybe get some value on the river. Um, yeah. And if you thought folding or going all in, um, no value in that. We're chopping with kings and we're losing a quad. So no value to extract. Until a 10 hits on the river and suddenly we have the best boat possible. Now we are still losing to twos, but we are now beating all kings, and all kings have a full house, which is a pretty strong hand. And now she checks. So, 114 yeah, in the middle. Interesting. You have the second nuts. It's very easy for your opponent to have the third nuts, which is a very strong hand on this board. Kings full of deuces. 
what should you do? Should you check, bet 50, bet 100, or bet 200? Mm. Basically go all in. <clears throat> Bruce is shoving uh, slightly bigger than Ooh. 200 for that one. Peter going 50, Torosman going 200, which is just under twice pot. Yeah, what are you guys doing here? This is uh, obviously fucking gin on the river, but does our villain check some King X? Are we trying to get value from just the king? What are we doing here? Mm -hmm. A couple of 200s, a 50, and a 100. We At got a little bit of 50, 200 be greedy. <laughs> DB Chops is betting 200 as well and saved him $2. <laughs> Leave him a big blind behind. Beats loves the 200 over bet. Ginger going 100. Meatball going 100. 419 checking. Ooh. What? Who said check? Uh, PC.com member, 419 DMC. Newest member of Team Toe. Be easy on him. We have the nuts. We have the nuts. <laughs> we have the Uber. Sorry, have I'm going to have to give you a penalty. We don't just have the nuts. We have, we have the Uber nuts. These are the nuts. The Uber, Uber, He's about to get Uber, that Uber tap nuts. on the shoulder from the floor, like, sir, you're gonna have to, to sit out in orbit. Get a bet the nuts. Second nuts, I guess. Second nuts, the quad. That's no, not even a nut, so I guess you wouldn't get a. Deuces. No, you sure. wouldn't get a penalty for this. Um, Dude, we're right. going 200. News says one third. Every king is calling any size over bet 200. Get max value. Yeah. And then we'll fall. Uh, Jay Coop, our guy is betting 50 to get a value, to get value from what? more of the range than just the king. Fair. And I'm seeing every single bet size. I've seen 50, I've seen 100, I've seen 200, and it's just all over the board. Uh, checking the coconuts can't be GTO. <laughs> nah, <laughs> Bella, what's up, Bella, Bella? We are getting paid by a deuce only. Machine gun, what's up, buddy? Yeah, true. Coming in Depending late because he was up late last night, sweating my final table and sweating uh, IHOX yeah. Matt, another member of this study group. Biggest score of his life last night. Congratulations. That's probably why he's not here. He's asleep, too. <laughs> uh, All right. Yeah. Uh, God. What's your dude doing? Uh, he's betting. I don't remember how much. I'm it's kind of like, this, this is like kind of a fun spot in live poker because I can like almost guarantee that this, like, this person has no idea how many chips are in the pot, you know, so ah, like yeah. they don't actually know how big the silver bet is. So a lot of players, like if you say all in, they're just going to think it's like, oh, it's all my chips, you know, whatever. So like, like it gets pretty interesting because they probably don't even know that it's like you SPR know, it's one or less than one or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. They just like, they think of it as like, I mean, typically if it's five limps to flop, like, you know, it's not going to be a strong player. So, I mean, I'm just jamming every time here, but. <laughs> like if it's all, if it's somebody who's like you know putting in their chips like with care every single time and they're like you know they really don't want to go broke and they don't have a rebuy in their in their wallet you know like then you can go smaller but because obviously it'd be a nightmare if somebody ever folded a king here but I think we just jam like they're never folding a king go back never time. from a loving yeah. perspective do you say all in when you do it or do you say two hundred too um because like all in sounds scarier than if you say I bet two hundred. I actually don't know. I, I think that I'm not, sure. I'm not sure. I think I say all in. I don't like to move my chips. So like, like I'll take like, like I'll wait, and then I'll put a small amount of my chips in and say all in without like pushing all my chips. In. Um, like it wouldn't make sense to like take a like fifty dollars in chips and like say two hundred. You know, so that that's typically what I do. But I don't know if that's just like a habit or um, or anything else. I was getting deep on the leveling there. Uh, I know. I usually just say all in as well. Just. All in, you know, makes it easier than trying to move in stacks and looking nervous. But, cool. What are you doing here, uh, Sixers? Oh, I mean, I'm just, I'm greedy as hell. So whatever, <laughs> I'm greedy as hell in these spots. So I'm going for whatever the most, whatever, 200. Twice pop. Yeah, I'm not even leveling myself. Because if I bet 50 and they show me a deuce. I'm never betting 50, um, but I was thinking pot sounds yes. okay. Pot, um, and then 200 is obviously a good answer. Yeah, yeah, just greedy as hell. 200 here for me. So, um, Jay Coop is going 50 because he wants to value the under pairs, ace highs, and pairs under a king, you know, or 10x in the pot. It seems reasonable, but I'm just too greedy not to go for it all when they bet twice on this sport. So, cool. 
Maybe I'll go on a hundred. Let's find out what it is. Yep. And as oh, usual, sweet. we want to think about what parts Three. of our opponent's range we are targeting and trying to get value from. By checking, we're trying to get no value from any parts of her range. Um, and we're just looking to get a one orbit penalty. So we're not going to do that. <laughs> get a one what about the penalty. other sizes? 50 is a size that possibly a deuce will be able to call. Um, you know, there's 200 out there. She calls. Maybe it's worth it. She might flick in a chip uh, if we bet 50. Uh, 25 is also a size that would almost certainly get us called by a deuce. But let's compare it to the other sizes. Because if she has a king... Just she's also probably just going to call our bet. She's just going to turn it down a little bit. Just like um, so if we bet 100, she has to call half as often as she does for 50 for us to for it to be a better bet. Um, and if we bet 25, a quarter as often for it to be a better bet. If we bet 200, you can see that she needs to call very infrequently compared to the bet of 50 for it to be more profitable. And here's the thing, especially at 1-3. If someone has a king here, they're not folding it for any size. So you might as well go for the maximum. At this stage in the game, we don't expect to get much more value from a two. We've played in our, our hand in a way that we already got the maximum from a two. We are looking to get paid by a king. And we are looking to get paid the maximum. So the sizing we choose here is to go for the full Monty, 200 into 100. And our opponent had a deuce, so she folded. But I will bet you my bottom dollar that if she had a king, she's For going, sure. oh, man, I call for the split. guess we got the same hand. I call. And, uh, you know, you don't slow her and say, oh, king? See, I got the nuts. Sorry. Right. Uh, unlucky. All right. Um, and uh, we scoop that pot. But if we had raised on the flop, we probably don't get that extra bet on the turn. And, um, yeah, against the entire range of hands she could have, we gave ourselves the best chance to win the maximum. And... That's what you want to do when you have the nuts, and there's a decent chance your opponent has a strong hand as well. Anyway, this has been Evan Jarvis for PokerCoaching.com. I hope you enjoyed the quiz. I hope you learned a thing or two, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. We got a little wrecked on the turn here. We scored 30. What'd you got? We got a 37. Oh, shit. Two for two. Two for two. Now, wait a minute. There's an interesting discussion going on in chat regarding if the cutoff ever even checks the king, and I think they absolutely should um depending on what the king is in some in, in some spots um when we bet twice are we really getting three streets from worse mm -hmm. um we may occasionally get you to bluff rivers um as well so what's going to call three times i guess depending if we bet really small in the river we can get caught by worse so i do think some people do check the king yeah and like, if, like in the cutoff shoes yeah if they are only betting their kings what are they checking like they're not betting twice with a side you know so like and they're not betting the turn with the two so like it doesn't hard for them to bet sense. twice like pocket eights too right i mean that would be really really terrible but <laughs> i mean it's, it's possible but like pocket eights like if we really limit their range to like medium pocket pairs that are terribly misplayed mm -hmm. like sure you can bet 20 but like that, that would be pretty ridiculous to like limit someone's range to that so sure I mean, there's just no it, it, it's so um like, it, like it's it's so unlikely that the goal of our river is to give value from, you know, this played middle pairs. Sure. Agreed. Right. 100% agree. True. All right, you're two for two. I'm I'm just proud of myself for not doing too bad in that, Good. In that uh, cash in quiz. <laughs> See, you can crush the limpy. I can beat one three, guys. I can beat one three. It's it possible. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Jay Coop. Two for two, back-to-back -back weeks. Good job, champ. I got you. I got you, man. Um, that's interesting. I don't yeah. know what the hundred dollar bet uh, was worth, Gil, but I do think that's pretty viable as well. Um, yeah, we didn't see what that was. Yeah, but I don't know what that score was. Um, do you want to change the password on the giveaway, or do you want to keep? Yeah, it let's the same? do that because I have more uh, peeps in here. So all right, we got to change the password. We're going to make it just GTO. Just GTO. Type it in the chat for your chance to win $5 ACR, PayPal, whatever works for you. Uh, we will draw a random winner from this stream, a random winner from Six's stream. You guys will compete against each other like we just did with Meatball and I forget who was on your slide, but... J. Coop. J. Coop. Um, so get in there. Probably shouldn't be leading flop into 18 players with a two, right? Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> This well, is, they were, and they were just they were late position, and I guess need some protection. But yeah, probably there's a lot of kings out there eight ways. 
You shouldn't even bet. Yeah, you shouldn't bet eight either. I don't think. No. <laughs> Not eight ways. Yeah. I'm gonna throw Justin's uh, Twitter out there if you guys want to give him a follow as well. He tried to stay hidden for so long. He's too famous now. He's no, been on the, he's it's been on the study time. stream. He can't hide anymore. Jake Dawson, thank you for the follow. Uh, let's pick a quiz while we're waiting. Just GTOs are streaming in the chat. In the meantime, uh, we're going back to tournaments. You stay in the cash game land. Um, it's whatever. I picked the last two pretty let's much. Let's do 986. Let's do Lexi. Yeah. We right. don't die. We multiply. Guys, got about 10 seconds left to whip Just GTO in the chat to compete. Uh, you say 986? What number did you say? Uh, 986, yeah. 986, sweet. Do, 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 do. Cool. Nice. We got a lot of people this time, sweet. Just GT. Oh, get in there, guys. You guys will be seeing this kid's name a lot in the future, I promise. We talk about him a lot. Yeah. Once in a while, he comes out from behind the curtain. I think next year when we go to Vegas, Jesse, we won't go 0 for 18 again like we did two summers ago. <laughs> <laughs> we played everything and bricked fucking everything. I mean, funny. that's how I felt about this year, too. It's like, you know, <laughs> went to Mexico, you put three bullets in the main. I mean, I ran deep in a couple of the 1Ks, but... I did good last yeah. summer. This summer I had three min caches <laughs> and like four bubbles within like 30. Thank God for cash games, man. Jeez. <laughs> if you go to Vegas and play tournaments and don't play any cash, you... You're making a mistake for sure, man. Yeah, I mean, especially when the games like when the games are so big, you either have to play cash or just like grind so much because like, like the variability of your buy-ins is so big. Like you go from playing 109s and 215s to 5Ks mm. and 10Ks, and so it's like you can be up a <laughs> you can be up 100 buy-ins and just down infinite on the summer because there's just right. such a big discrepancy in buy-ins. So mm. you need yeah. to find a way to either just like put an in infinite volume and or, like just grind so hard or like play cash and. Something like play cash and even it up. Something yep. that's why i go to Vegas. every time i go to vegas i'm gonna find a couple nights where i'm grinding yeah, 12 yeah. hours a few times yeah like, yeah put in i mean yeah, go insane get the session. plo8 or something yeah. <laughs> right all right well, let's pick somebody let's do it i'm ready um, um rolling it it is got twirl spin my ooh. man congratulations buddy the man the myth the legend the lemon demon Dinam. What's up, my dude? All right, guys. Uh, Lexi's quiz, 219. Ladies event. Let's see what happens. Good luck, Lemon. Good luck, Lemon. Uh, 986. I'm doing it now. Let's Ready? go. Yep. Hi, everyone. This is Lexi Gavin here at CoopersCoaching.com. And today I'm going to talk to you about a hand that I played at this last year's ladies event at the World Series of Poker. I actually wound up final tabling it. I busted in sixth place. So Beast. I had a bunch of fun hands to go over. So let's jump right into the action. The blinds are 400, 800 with an 800 ante. It folds to the low jack, who is a solid female player. She started the hand with about uh, 50, uh, 48K, so she has roughly 60 big blinds. So we are, on, we are in the cutoff with a nice suited connector, 9-8 suited. So what should we do? Should we fold, call, or raise to 5,000? All right, guys, here we are. 9-8 suited late position. What are we doing? What are we doing? Nice way to slide in the brag, Lexi. Agreed. Uh, Twirl's calling right away. First one in there. He's ready to go. What did she say? I, I missed that. Uh, she final tabled us and took sixth. So she had a bunch uh, of Yeah, she final tabled the ladies in it. That's pretty sick. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a, probably a massive feel. Yeah. Yeah. Beast. Pete's she's calling. Such Bruce a, calling. She's so cool. And like, just good, like, sick at poker. Good coach, everything. Mm. She's one of the few yeah. coaches we haven't met. Yeah, I haven't met her in person either. She's a lot of like chatting. Hmm. Everybody calling. Ginger, Twirl, Beats, Bruce, Julius, everybody calling. Hmm. Oh, not Dudorino. Dudorino going 5K. <laughs> DMC calling. Lemon, Lemon is uh, doing, uh, doing. He's three betting here. He said, I would three bet. Hmm. Okay. I will raise. Okay. Fold, Jacob says. No, 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 no. He's too respect. <laughs> no, 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 no. Hedge bets it's calling it squeeze, well. so probably raise is still in position. Says uh, never Kevin. ever folding. We so you raising? I feel you. You get your final answer. Oh yeah, uh, he is three betting to five k. Go says call play goes multi way if there are more flats. Ah, uh, 
I'm a little torn. I can kind of see some three bets here for sure. These are kind of some of the hands we want to turn to the playoffs. Calling definitely profitable. Um, I mean, I, I really actually think I'm I'm going to go the cheat answer and say I'm pretty mixed here. Three bet to uh-huh. call. I think we want to call. I think we want to call. Yeah. I think our three bets here are like suited kings, maybe like queen nine, jack nine. I think I'm we have a think small frequency. Three. I would have like maybe 10, 20 percent at a time here, especially depending on the players behind. If they're like going to be squeezing a lot and we're not going to get to just play a pot by just calling. We're just they're just going to squeeze. I would probably tend to three bet a little bit more, mm-hmm. especially if it's a good player opening and not some fish because I just want to call versus the fish. But yeah, I think overall we I'd probably just call here. Interesting. Yeah, I mean three bet can't be too bad, right? Like, no, it can't. Yeah. It can't be bad, but it's I think we're just like pretty much pure calling like a like suit and hand. Seventy five twenty five raise to call. Cool. Most people calling. Couple of raises. Uh twelve spin calling, ready to go? Yep. Uh we're gonna raise here, but yeah, I'd probably call, but let's see. Raise it is. Let's do it. Uh, Oh, uh, close one though. Close. We have a nice <laughs> connector you. in position, and we are we are roughly 100 big blinds affected, <laughs> so we have some more playability. Uh, so folding is just out of the question. Um, calling, I gave seven points. You can call here sometimes, but I think I prefer applying pressure. So I gave raise to five thousand a score of ten points. Um, this, because of the fact that she East. is 60 big blinds effective, we can get away with a bit of a smaller 3 bet. If she were, say, 100 big blinds, I'd go at least 3x. Um, so I think anywhere between 5,000, 5,500 is a good sizing. Uh, I probably would have gone for 5,500 just because we do want that bit of, uh, that extra bit of hold equity. So, but we go 5,000. Button folds, small blind folds. One folds and she calls. So the flop is ace of diamonds, six of clubs, five of hearts. She checks to us. And what should we do? Should we check bet 4,500 or bet 7,500? Newsroom says if I was in this position, I'd be wondering how I'm playing this woman's event as a man. <laughs> just gotta wear, just gotta wear a dress. It's a game. And pay double, isn't it? Like a 10k when a guy is Something like, like you can do it, but yeah. it's like. Frowned upon, and they yeah, deep did nobody it. Should, yeah. Nobody should do it. Well, no, just why? Stop it. I think deep did it one year, maybe. Yeah, he, he did. did. Do it. So funny. <laughs> it's a one k for women, but then ten k for men. Yeah, <laughs> he's chasing the player of the year shit all the time. That's why. Yeah. Uh, Forty five hundred rage bet says structure. Would they let me play if I wore a kilt? Ooh, interesting. You're kind of in that <laughs> gray that area, guilt. Of kind of in that gray area. Um, when you wear a kilt, do you wear underwear? I don't want to see. I just kind of mor- morbidly <laughs> curious. Uh, C bet forty five says twirl forty five forty five. Kept says three k, but that makes him bet forty five. he would be going quarter pop forty five for dad. Rad dad. What's it looking like in the sixes mafia? C bet one hundred percent range for sure. We so says uh, four point five k for peanut. Uh, yeah, lemon. Lemon is uh, going 4.5K as well. A lot of 4.5Ks here. Definitely betting station favor, says. Uh, yeah, I see nothing but 4.5Ks here. And, yeah, if we have Lexi on our lefts in a tournament, our lives are going to be hell because she's full frequency three betting us with 9-8 suited and the top of range. So it's going to be a problem. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's just tough. Only I mean, I like it. Goes commando. Uh, yeah, we got all 4,500s, even DMC betting 4,500. The only check out there is Bluff Lovin' out on his island. Uh, I agree. I'm betting 4,500. We got to rep the ace. Um, <laughs> 4.5K be ready to triple off, DB Chop says. Bro, bro. <laughs> all right, let's Lovin do it. Says he's got a decent hand, doesn't want to get blasted off. Hmm. I think it's a you medium ground hand right now. If there is a spade out there, it might be slightly different. Mm. It's just getting back for me. I mean, we're only, I mean, I'm. Uh, yeah, we're just betting. Everybody betting? Any of you guys checking? Oh, no, I'm betting for sure. No, no, yeah, small bet. Yeah, small bet. A65 is like so good for us because, like, I mean, we're, we're bluffing A6 suited, A5 suited almost like a lot. So, like, we have all the two pairs too, actually. I like a lot of them. Yep. And still have the strongest parts of our range of Ace yeah, Kings, yeah. Ace Queen, Ace Jacks. Yeah. We're just crushing we have, this board. That's more. Yeah, we're crushing it. Yeah. All right. Um, let's do it. What's up, Emai? Good morning. Deep trip in the house. What's up, buddy? Good to see you. Home slice. 
Alright, you ready? Let's do it. So I gave checking a score of three points. I definitely Lexi's tough on the points, too, in general. Zero. You remember that? Straight, and we have no showdown value. Zero. Zero. So she gave somebody a zero. Goose egg. <laughs> and apply pressure here. Um, I, so now it's just a matter of sizing. So we could, I gave betting 4,500 a score of 10 points. I think this is a good sizing. I, it's a relatively dry texture. And I, so I think going anywhere between 30 and 40% pot is good. She's going to have a lot of hands here that completely brick. So there's no reason for us to put more money in the pot than we need to. Like if she had a hand like King Jack, I don't think she's gonna be floating the flop. And if she does have a hand that she can continue with, like pocket tens or pocket eights or something, then she is gonna be calling the flop to a C bet most likely. So again, too many hands that I think we would have to worry about being check raised, so you don't have to worry about going too small right. because I don't think she's going to be check raising a hand like pocket tens or, you know, eight or, uh, like, or sevens or something. So we do elect to go 4,500 and she falls. And now the turn is a six of diamonds. She checks. What should we do? Should we check bet 8,000 or bet 16,000? <laughs> Beats asking the important questions here. You can see I have my hand on my head. He says she's a solid female, but is she thick? It's like, oh, Jesus. Way, Jesus way to get creepy. Jesus. My gosh, creepy. We got creepy on this stream last last one, too. Solid uh, player. Has with uh, Jennifer Tilly. Check says PTR. Um, Let's see. Solid player has ace jack in the range. Okay, I see what you're saying. Station's favor. What are we doing here, Lemon? Julius. My chat's going crazy. They've got lots of rails. <laughs> <laughs> Happens every week at some portion, of course. Uh, 12 spin double barreling. Double barreling. He's going AK. Keep it a small again. Think about it again. Says Cap. Get to get milling pairs to fold. Give up if a brick. So you guys are tournament guys. Why do you like tournaments speak or over cash games? Uh, it's kind of a long discussion. I have uh, a real easy answer for that. Um, I'm super you're... fucking competitive. Uh, I'm too old and beat up to do sports anymore. So I love the competition aspect of it. That's a big thing for me. I love the feeling of standing on top of the heap. And I also love, <laughs> in a sick way, I love the fucking agony of defeat. It all drives me. Um, I like the blinds go up so I can put pressure on people's stacks. Um, so that's my answer. Tournaments all the way for me. But no, man, there's a lot of com there's a lot of competition in cash games. There it's, is. You get some of the same. You're just like trying to play the same spot better than somebody else, like over and over and over again. Sure. For me, they just get kind of monotonous. It doesn't change. You're hundred bucks deep. Like 2X, you get to like two x and two point five x over bet terms, though. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> this, I, this is the discussions GTO and I have been having for three years. He, he, he keeps trying to get me over to the dark side. So far, I've won. He's playing more tournaments than I'm playing cash games. Just because of the, it's just because of uh, COVID. Purely, COVID purely, purely financial. That's funny. But the thing is, if, if we're talking live poker, it has to be like cash over tournaments every single day of the week. If you had to pick one or the other, if you ask me, just moving up the cash ladder, it's more, much better than grinding out tournaments all day every day hard to get volume. If, you're, if you're strictly it playing live it's awful. real hard to get your volume in unless you're playing like really high stakes but grinding like two and three hundred dollar yeah tournaments every day that sounds like hell on earth i can't do that yeah i totally agree unless you're like it traveling sounds playing, fucking terrible yeah like if you're like traveling and playing like you know the 3200s or 35 like wpts and yeah you know, some of that stuff like that could be fun but it's you just different. have to understand that you're just going to deal with infinite variance so like you can easily yeah, have like a losing year and just go play like you know two two hundred and fifty live tournaments like that like grind really hard. But... Yeah, and even those guys are playing cash games on the side to make up for the yeah, fucking the cost of the tournaments and the travel. Uh, yeah. Uh, Lemon is betting eight k here, off, huh? but checking is tempting is tempting too for pot control. Um, I'll keep, keep close to the mic, PTR. Sorry about that. Yeah, I think I know what I'm doing here. Did uh, your guy? Uh, make a just make a decision here. I don't fucking know. We're sitting here talking shit. Uh, continuing line, C bet AK is what uh, Twirl says. DMC betting AK. Dudorino going AK. Gil going AK. Meatball going AK. 
Check the flop, bet turn. Now you have to check, says Bluff, since he bet the flop. 8K for Kep. Uh, G Trip likes cash games, but he's wrong. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Oh, I want to answer this question I see in uh, Six's chat. Sure. We have uh, Arn, Arn Nassi says, top cash players sometimes call tournaments donkaments. What is your comment? Like, I, in my view, I think that whoever, like, if you play cash games or tournaments primarily, people just have big egos. Like, Tournament players, turn players like cash game players, and they're like, oh, they have no idea how to play. Like, you know, let them come in. You know, but if you're a good poker player and you just spend the time or get coaching or just like study hard from like, you know, you like 10 BB play or 20 BB play, et cetera. Like, if you're good, you're going to be a good tournament player. And if you're like a really good tournament player and you like study deep stat games more and cash games and how like rake affects your games and, you know, all those things, you're going to be a good cash game player. So I just think like people have big egos and it's just like, there's more variance in cash or in tournaments. So like people like right. feel the need to call them like bingo and stuff. Like all that stuff just doesn't matter. Like people just have big egos in general. And I think overall it's just about if you get good at poker, you'll be good at poker relatively everywhere. Well, right? It's about yeah, your work like, ethic to get to that point. Right. Yeah. yeah. And you obviously have to study like the concepts. Like if you're a cash game player, like for me, I've had to do a lot of like ICM work because like, it wasn't like I spent years just focused on turn on cash games. So like, of course I'm going to be behind on my final table strategy, but if you put in, you know, a lot of work on it, like I'm not like an expert in it or anything, but if you study it a lot, like you're going to get good at it. So it's always so funny to me when people are like trying to cross, like people are trying to cross book each other and all that stuff and saying like, you can't beat the high stakes. Like if you look at yourself from six months ago and you like, don't think that you're like extremely better or like have learned a lot since six months, and like you're not improving fast enough so like it always makes me laugh that people are so uh you know like people i just have big videos <laughs> about it either way it's so funny right yeah did you just I have isamizer and i have not used it once for shame for shame i say will right. instantly make you money it has an roi attached to it use your isamizer i've been running hands yeah. every day for like a decade even still sixes and gto and i when we study we still end up running isamizer hands at least once a session regardless of what we're doing it always comes up yeah so definitely a, a good tool there Dietrich. and if you remember check out the acevedo icm stuff like he went through the oh 100k mm -hmm. and like pe people think that these guys who are like high stakes players are just like always sick like they make massive mistakes too i mean i, I think it was like greenwood called off the sevens uh mm -hmm. like ft the ft of a final table or sorry ft the 100k and like it was just losing like 150k you know dollars like it was just, like a massive icm mistake and like Something you like have to study and have to like work It's funny, he said, I was watching Poker Masters and coincidentally it was Ollie in a hand and stacks were real close and he had ace jack suited and there was a raise and a jam and he ended up calling off the ace jack suited and I was going nuts on the TV. Really, uh, yeah. My wife was like, what the fuck? And I'm going, I'm like, that's a mistake. I know that's a fucking mistake, but he's goddamn <laughs> Ollie. And so then I actually paused it, ran it in ICMizer and Ollie made a mistake. So even the greatest, I mean, and yeah. Ollie is one of the greatest alive right now. And uh, even those guys make mistakes sometimes. Yeah. yeah, sometimes if it's that guy, I'm always thinking to myself, like, all right, it looks like a mistake to me, but like, like what can't be wrong. I don't know. Right. Yeah. Like, there's some reason I, yeah. you know, those guys are just so sick. Like, you know, yeah. they're one of the best players in the world. So I'm always like, all right, what am I missing here? Like, yeah. future games. There's something involved. they know that we don't. Yeah. And some, like, F, like, uh, some, you know, the Negron you bet that changes things, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, Drennan won that last event, and like, he has extra, like, an extra 100K if he wins, like, as a side bet. Mm. And so, like, that's something else you have to take into consideration. Sure. Like if, if it's a big event with like 2 million up top, 100K is not that much. But like if you're in the FT event with like 280 up top, all of a sudden that's massive. Like totally, yeah, you're totally punting. <laughs> it's almost like a PKO where you take extra risk because of the extra little juice on the Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, for sure. Uh, Kev says you got to make money to use Isomazar. So my comment on that yeah. is if you can't afford it, no shame in your game, put it on your Christmas list, make it a priority or win it. Or icmizer.com, you can pull, I don't remember how many hands, I think it's three hands for free every day. So stack them up and run them for free. For sure. For sure. Um, all right, cool. Let's finish this quiz. Uh, yeah, let's finish this quiz. Yeah. We got, but it was a good conversation, so that's okay. It was, no, absolutely. Um, I'm double bearing here. Uh, generally speaking, when an under pair to the top card pairs, it's one of the better double barrel spots. Uh, we get the like pairs of sevens, pairs of nines, pairs of tens, that kind of thing to fold when we go bet twice. Three bet bet twice. So, um, what's the Casio say? I'm probably going like 12. 
So I'm kind of in between eight and sixteen myself. I'm kind of torn up. Well, I mean, I, I guess eighteen. The, I guess eight still gets the under pairs to fold, right? Well, we look at it from a pure like standpoint of the SPR as well. Like, I mean, if we put in eight k, that sixteen k is going to create a not one we're almost committed, but like sixteen is just too much. I mean, we're going to be it's going to be fifty four. 54k or something 53k and they're gonna have like 16 five behind so it seems like a disaster to bet 16 we probably accomplish the same things our hand doesn't have showdown value but we still might be able to make some hands fold by going eight um you know and then just trying to realize the equity there but yeah i don't think we get check raised too often so uh, eight seems reasonable i don't know if we just give up though when we three bet c bet and they continue when we went so small but. Yeah, I think like our eight nine of diamonds here probably checks because we really don't want to bet fold like hand with like our diamonds here. Equity. Yeah, true. Yeah, we have too much equity. So like trying to think about our bluffs, like we definitely have like king seven, king eight, king nine suited. And those might make a little bit more sense. Um because like we're only blocking one of the pocket pairs that we're trying to get to fold. Like eight nine, we're blocking like eight, ten, nine. Sure. But if we like king nine, we're only blocking oh, like we're blocking less, right? So I guess like if we have king seven, king eight, that probably wants to bluff before this hand, maybe. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, this is, a, this is I'm not I'm not sure about this spot. Mm -hmm. The six is nice because I get blocked. Like um, it takes away some of the set combos. Machine gun going sixteen max pressure. If you had an ace here, would you go sixteen though, Marlon? I feel like if you had an ace, you'd probably go slightly smaller because you're trying to call it. I think maybe you'd go sixteen, Marlon. Yeah, I don't think sixteen <laughs> makes too much sense. <laughs> So sixes, do you think uh, just as many hands fold to the smaller bet as the larger bet? Um, it still applies enough pressure. And I do think the hands that we're really targeting with maybe backdoor equity and some of the pairs that we're getting the correct price, because he can only really fold like, he should be calling like, we went 30% or so on the flop. So he needs to be calling like 70% of his range or something like that. So he should be calling with like king, queen of clubs uh to a flat bet you know um even though a lot of people don't he should be calling or she should be calling with all her pairs to our small c bet as well mm -hmm. um you know we are blocking the eights and nines that we're kind of trying to get the fold which kind of sucks but at the same time i think we can use a still small bet we don't really mind getting blasted off this equity and i don't think we're going to show down and win yeah i'm with uh, I like so eight thousand too i think i, I think i like eight thousand it doesn't commit us 16 is just way too big um, yeah, I'd be splitting the difference in game for sure. Yeah, I think this just sets up a nice SPR in case, in the event that we do want to like jam some rivers. I don't know what we would use as a bluff, maybe a queen or something like that, but I don't want to go too far ahead just in case. Yeah, the one issue with the with the bigger best size in the turn toe is like, if we bet here, like, I mean, it's just, obviously we don't want to split our range, but I feel like with our bluffs, we want more forward equity on the river. <laughs> Mm, yeah. So, like if you make it like 8k then it, at least it like lets you have like a bigger like more sure. equity on i'm river, going bigger right? here and giving up on river and you're going smaller here and jamming river yeah, yeah well sometimes yeah you know and then we can still like just get there i don't know like if we go 12 it's like 0.5 or 0.6 spr which is <laughs> tough you know yeah it's half their stack if it goes 16. hey what's up i hit those um but yeah we are doing we've been talking so long i kind of lost with my what we're doing in this spot it's good to hang out again, guys. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Wait a minute. Uh, Twelve's been going AK. He's with, he's with us. I'm I like. What are we doing, Lemon? Uh, Poker fan must be a friend of yours, Justin. Yeah, he says, okay. uh, oh, he's doing you can't play cash. You're washed up. So just want to make sure you're, <laughs> you're getting all the love from Poker fan. Yeah, Chris all is great. Cool. Shout out Poker fan. What a guy. He he's gonna be a cash. Like, he is crushing cash games, but mm -hmm. he, he's gonna be moving up the stakes here soon. When are we getting him over to the dark side? <laughs> Uh, he, yeah. he's fired a couple of times. He, want, he wants action all the time. He's just like, give me the action, like sell a piece of the 630. <laughs> he's like a young GTO. He's great. No, he's older than he's, man. He's like a. Uh, I teach him some poker. He teaches me about life, and that's good enough. Wow. We have a similar that's relationship. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. Uh, we're going AK. What are you guys doing? AK. That's right. Let's do it. So I gave checking a score of 10 points. Bet eight thousand a score of five. All that. And bet sixteen thousand a score of two points. Just giving up. So I think checking is the best option here. I think that the six of diamonds, which is now you know paired board on the turn, uh, is just a really bad card for us. She's going to be less inclined to fold. Uh, 
to another street with a hand like pocket sevens or any other pair. Um, and she's going to have a lot of ace-x combinations in her range True. as well. So I think this is just one of those spots where you have to just kind of give up and hope to hit your four otter on the river for the straight. Um, so, but if we are going to bet, I think betting 8,000 is better than betting 16,000. In the event, she did float the flop with some kind of backdoor Broadway combination. Um, she's going to be folding the turn most likely. So again, we don't want to risk too many chips. And if she does have a hand like a pair, um, she's probably going to be calling one more straight. So <laughs> therefore, um, and she'll probably call either the 8,000 or the 16,000. So it kind of doesn't make a difference. So I think we should just try and risk those chips. And, but checking is, I think, by far the best option. So we decide to check. And the river is a seven of clubs, and she leaves out 13,500. So what should we do? Should we fold, call, or go all in? Bink. All right, cool. Thanks for those biddies, Doug, the hug. And what's up? I hit those. Yeah, this is probably the last quiz, though. Probably wrapping it up potentially after this. Yeah, I got to do um, tier, team toes study or study, study group today. I know Justin's got some little bit of time this morning, so. But, yeah, this is uh, quiz. yeah. What are we doing here, Mafia and Toe Army? Lefty, Random this jam. is Lexi Gavin <laughs> uh, on the screws. Uh, Mendo shoving, PTR shoving, Martin. That's okay, buddy. That's why we're here, my man. Uh, Troll spin. Our man of the hour is jamming. I haven't seen anything but jams. Got to jam. From meatball. Just call. Don't think Asex calls a raise, and she can have some better hands. Okay, guess shoving since we got this far says Wonka call. We hit our straight, but full house is out there. This is DMC. <laughs> all in for Julius. Jamming. Couple Thank of God calls and guys. a lot of all ins in my channel. Poker fan jamming. Marlon, of course, jamming. Men click never stop dreaming says. <laughs> uh, King Mohawk and Conquest. Thank you for the follows. High five the deal. High five the deal. That might be a tail. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> I'm on it. <laughs> yeah. This is an assassinato quiz. Drink your Red Bull, slam it on the table. Yes. Ginger jamming. <laughs> <laughs> or do like one of those full helmets where you like get the chips Scream in like fuck crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Scream fuck yeah, stand up. Smile. Actually, and it's shot. actually funny because uh, that stuff happens. Like, I mean, not in these events, but like in live cash. That, I mean, that actually happens. Like, people freak out. Whoever will come, and you'll just like noticeably see this cat, like, be so happy. You're like, yeah. <laughs> premature ejaculation. Yeah. Yeah. That's so funny. Um, did you get your answer? Sixes? Yeah. I mean, oh, snap jamming. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think uh, we're, we're jamming here for tool too. Yes. Cool. Um, you jamming sixes? Yeah. Yes. You jamming, Justin? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I kind of had the same thought. Like, Meh. Like, I just like, feel like there's not a lot worse that calls us. We get called by the better aces, and then, fuck, man. Like, what are we jamming? Aces. Yeah. I mean, like, the better like... ace-x combos. Like, like ace-eight, we might get the fold if we jam here. Ace. I don't know. Ace-three, ace-two. Ace I mean, they have ace-ten, ace-jack. Ace-ten. Is, is a Who jam? Is ace-ten ace calling here? Well, they 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 can make a mistake. That's the problem. Like sure. we, I got I got to give these ca this. Uh, I got to give her a chance to make a mistake. Like people, I mean, our, our our hands too good. Like I think a lot of people on a six five two are like. What? I would assume this the solid females, but like the low jack is supposed to be bluffing with some six seven on the flop. Um, and I think that they're raising six five suited if they have it and some sets. So it kind of takes away like some of the boats because they're probably gonna check raise the flop with like some Agreed. portion of that. I'm jamming. Yeah, I think we just jam. I think they can. Uh, I even see players just call three bets with ace king and ace queen and stuff like that. They're gonna call with those. Check call. Yeah, they're gonna call with those. I just think they can call with worse ace. Um, and I think they check raise like Justin said on the flop or on the turn, you know, or something. Um, or on the flop primarily with their sets here. Mm. 
So, yeah. Um, he says he's so happy he's calling his mama in the room. I like that. I say that all the time. <laughs> happy dance, call your mama in the room. Uh, all right, let's do it. We're all jamming. All right, let's do it. Pop. Yeah. Snap. So I gave folding a score of zero. Uh, we have the nut straight, so we're definitely never folding here. I gave calling a score of six points and going all in a score of ten points. Now, I know it's... It can seem scary because there are flesh, uh, full houses, you know, on the board. But I was trying to think of how many how many boats she actually has in her range, and she doesn't really have that many. I don't think that she's uh, calling a three bet free flop with a six. Uh, she maybe could have five six suited. Um, she doesn't really have any other six x combinations. Like I don't think she's opening hands that like queen six or king six and that in in a low jack and uh if she were opening a hand like six eight suited or six four suited i doubt she'd be calling a three bet to that free flop so i don't think we have too many boats to worry about she definitely could have a hand like pocket sevens uh we we gave her that on the uh, on the flop and the turn so that would stink if she had that um but I kind of just really think she has some kind of ace-x combo, like an ace-queen or an ace-jack or something. So I'm hoping that she mm -hmm. just kind of thinks that we're full of it oh. and just bad shoving the river. Shit. And maybe she'll she'll hero call us down with a hand like ace-queen. It'd be pretty hard for her to fold a hand like ace-queen. And she also could have ace-king. Maybe you know it's a, it's a it's a tournament, and maybe she didn't want to gamble with that many chips pre-flop with that. So... I think that shoving is the best option, so that <laughs> is what we do. And she calls with 6-4 suited, which I didn't think she'd be opening that in that position and calling 3-bet. So I was a little surprised Never. by that, but um, we we uh, won a nice pot there. So that is it for today. I hope you guys learned something, and I'll see you on the next one. That is never a bluff when we jam <laughs> like okay. in position. Like, what is what are we jamming that's worse than sit? Like, we're never jamming ace king. We're only calling. So once you get jammed on, you just have to fold six four man. People can't do it, but that's crazy. Hmm. Well, I we got a thirty five. Is it RNG time? Twenty seven thirty two. You swept us. We swept them today. What's up, Mafia? Hey. We did it, boys. What's it's up, only fair. Shepard? I think we swept buddy? you last week, so we're even. Hey, here. no, you didn't sweep me last week, oh. you soon, bitch. No, yeah. no, no. We don't get swept here in the Mafia. Don't ever talk to us like that. Watch your mouth, he said. <laughs> Watch your mouth. We, we don't lose. We don't take L's like that. Um. Good job, All right, guys. guys that was, was a good one. Today. <laughs> stream. Uh, thank you guys for hanging out. Exclamation PC in my chat. Exclamation PC in Six's chat where you can sign up for free. Get more of this content. Content created by all three of us. All these coaches that we messed with before. Uh, Lexi, Evan, Jonathan, Acevedo, Jonathan Little, Jonathan Jaffe, all the Jonathans. All that good stuff. You can sign up for the premium version. Um, you get a bunch of quizzes, webinars, staking <laughs> stuff. On all this good stuff. We do all this stuff every Saturday, noon Eastern. And if you missed this one or any of them, it's on the YouTube channel. YouTube. Where you can catch almost all of the ones we've done in the past. If you have any questions on there, leave it in the comments. I'll make sure our guest or sixes gets you an answer. Or I'll answer it myself, whichever one you are addressing. Um, so make sure you do that. Uh, we'll be back next week with bras, right? Yeah, we got Poker Bras uh, going to be joining us. You know, he plays... GG Poker, um, he's part of the uh, poker coaching community as well. Super cool guy, man. He does the no delay streams. Talk to him a little bit, hang out in his stream, and I like his vibe, and he's solid as hell. So it should be great, man. Yeah, fun. We're getting a European streamer too, so he <laughs> plays on Stars and, and uh, GG and, GG stuff and all that kind of stuff. It's got a good following. After that is Jay Smith, right? Uh, yeah, we're going to have Jay Smith on the steady stream as well after that. So, yeah, we got a good players lined up, line up back, back to back to back to back back. So make sure you tune oh. in and all that stuff. Justin, thanks what, for hanging out, buddy. It was good to have what, you. Thanks for having me. Anything guys. you want to plug, Justin, know. before you get out of here? Um, I know you do a lot of work with poker coaching. You know, he created some content there, some the cash game content there and an introduction to Pio video as well. So anything you got upcoming or you want to plug for yourself or anything? Um, 
Uh, not too much, man. You know, uh, I know you. <laughs> if, if you guys want anything, you know, I've, I've made some stuff for the site. I did some uh, 100 BB heads up cash game stuff, some six max cash game stuff. So always feel free to reach out to me if you, you know, if you guys want any more cash game um, content on the site, I'm, I'm happy to make make whatever. So I'm trying to get more of a regular schedule to have, have, help all the cash game grinders out there. So, uh, you know, just, just let me know. You know. I'm happy to help with anything. Yeah, if you want any of that content, cash game content, power content, it's on the PC, PC.com site in the premium section. Uh, you can reach out to him in the PC.com Discord. He's pretty active in there. We gave you his Twitter so he can't hide anymore. Uh, I think he's taking a couple more students. He does some coaching. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, he says, no, 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 no more, more students. students. So <laughs> spots open up. You can find him on the PC.com site for that uh, when he's taking more students. All that good stuff. Uh, thank you for the follow, Mike Canton, Hydro Mystic, and thank you for 29 months, Wisco. I appreciate you, buddy. And thank you, Pits Me Out, for the four months, and Doug the Hub for the biddies, and you guys for all the support. But yeah, we're going to get out of here. Justin, you the man. We talk all the time, buddy. I appreciate you, man, and it's cool to watch you grow. And this is cool, man. Thank, thank you again. Absolutely. Thanks, man. Much love, you guys. Uh, also, you. guys, don't forget, follow both me, follow both sixes, and uh, we'll be both be back. But, but I can't talk right now. We'll both be back tomorrow playing Big Sunday on all the sites, going after that big money. So make sure you tune in for that. My home game on ACR on Monday night. So we still have a few more days where you can hang out and watch us play poker. And that's it. Who are we throwing the host over to? Sixes. Yeah, that's what I was just looking. Is uh, Grips getting it in? We always give it to Evan, right? We try and give. I mean, it to yeah, but it's, it's the folks. Yeah, I don't see him on not... right now. Poker bras, maybe. Oh, that's if he's, is he on right now? Probably. Yeah, I think he's live. Yeah, poker bras. Since he's gonna be on next week, let's hit him with the fucking raid. Nice. Um, keep talking because I'm finding him. I got him. All right, cool. Thank you guys. We're gonna give it to bras. Make sure to give him a follow and have a good weekend, guys. I'll be back tomorrow playing a big ass schedule. Toe will be crushing it, and uh, yeah, we'll be here, guys. Thank you for the support, and let's do it. Peace. Peace. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Peace. Peace.